end of the day, most of these dudes, especially from the South, you know, the industry and rap is one thing, but they know why, how I move, rock, stand. I've been one of them dudes where my, my story is more told in the streets than it is throughout the industry side of things. So I'm still like an open book. You know, my career is through IG Unit, but I was moving in this game way before I ever met a fucking 50 Cent. You know, I was at a point of time in my life where, you know, I was riding around with Baby and he was dropping Wayne and Turk off in school. And I was supposed to be in school at the same age time myself, but I was doing a lot and had a lot more going on. So I was truly raised from these streets and some individuals out of this shit is just like myself, really from me. And they give that off through the music and people gravitate to it. I done learned like, it take a little time but these, in my kind, are the ones that people choose to love the most. You know, the ones, the artists that we follow, at least I do, and consider legend, are the ones that open up and give you their real life. Because when they hurt, you feel like you hurt. Or when they win, you feel like you win. That's what we love about Pop, or love about Jay, or Eminem, or any of these majors. You know, they've opened up real life in reality of what life really is with them at times, whether it was, you know, Pac in talking about the things that he's going through politically or M with his mother, you know, Jay and everything else. So that's that's the trend that I've kind of raised and followed. So I have nothing to hide. What you see is what you get. And I just think my time is coming around now to be understood as young buck because uh, truthfully, man, my story is just as real as say, quote unquote, a 50 cent, or if not really. And I think that's what we kind of bumped heads is because from a street perspective and a real life perspective, you know, some of the things of my life may naturally be what a motherfucker trying to make it be in their life. But my shit really this way. I've never flipped it and been that way with him. It's never been nothing a part of his life that I've tried to be. But can people say that the same about me? You understand what I'm saying? So, like I say, I don't want to spend this time just kind of bashing no fucking 50 or none of that shit because it's like, it's some positive things that come along or came along with the era G unit when I was involved over there. So, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity that was given to me from him because technically, shit, bro. Before I got that opportunity, I had been maneuvering through these streets in the game so much. And I'm like, shit, it just cost me $10. I mean, $300 to press up a thousand CD. I said, no motherfuckers, $10 a piece. You do the math. I slowed down from hustling in the streets before I even, because my seed, my own music was selling more than my fucking pack at a point in time. So I come from the grind of independent hustling. Mm. It ain't a pole in Cashville that I ain't probably hung my own post up and down. So I was established as a person independently hustling out of the game before I got the opportunity of 50. I already had a lot of education from the independent side of hustling, but it was a new level. Well, like I said. Well, let me ask you so, so, so number one, wasn't there a story in Double XL back in the day about you getting on the tour bus with Yayo when you first met him and showing him a hundred pack of crack? In real life, in real life, in what? real life. Damn, bro, you be really keeping up with shit on some real honest shit. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I was with Juvenile when I first met. Right. Uh, 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 Fifty and the whole G unit. See, rest in peace to CeeLo. That was our bus driver. CeeLo uh, passed away, which went on to become a part of uh, Cash Money and with with Baby now, and. Um, he had a relationship with Shaw Money, and I was just on the on the road with 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 uh with Juvenile, just moving around up through New York, and that's when the era G Unit and they had first dropped the mixtape, and shit was wild and live and shit. And he heard us playing the tape and was like, "Yo, I know dude who managed them. Hit him up." Long story short, they ended up coming by the bus. We had a studio on the bus at the time. And when they first came in, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, uh, I knew who they was just from the music period, but I respected 
from what I seen from the very moment because the shit seemed it was real life, you know. These niggas pull up with vests and shit on, you know what I'm saying? And he was moving real militant at that time, you know what I mean? And when Yayo came on the on the bus and shit, he was like, yo, you know what I mean? Uh I'm Yayo with shit like this, bro. And all that good shit, man. I'm like, hell yeah, he like nigga, I'm still in the streets just like you oblige. I got a pack on me now. That's where that come from. You feel what I'm saying? So you know, uh, honestly, bro. Do you think you really were keeping it a little too real for him there? Like, was was he a little taken aback because he didn't he didn't know that you were going to do that? Nah, he was the one that done. Oh, Not he me. busted that out. Okay, he okay. busted out with it. You know, honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. It was one of the best things that he could have did. Um, and, and I'm gonna say this why? Because when he done that, it put me in a perspective to make me feel he was just like me. Mm. I feel like he was really a part of the streets and he was somebody, he reminded me of one of my homeboys. So I became comfortable enough to say, you know what, let me play these records for him. And one of the records that I ended up playing for him ended up being Bloodhound on 50's Get Rich or Die Trying, mm. which my whole entire record, 50 bought that record for me. I've never sold a song in my life. He gave me a check for the record, kept one of my verses, took two of my verses, I'll put two verses on and became a record on Get Rich or Die Trying. So that kind of opened up the door to my whole G on this shit. Hmm. That was, I mean, that song in and of itself, it's like if you didn't know about Young Buck, I mean, you had a very like pit bull type thing going on in that song. Like you were I really like the mean meanest it. motherfucker on that song. <laughs> hey, listen, homie, at the end of the day, that era was, I kind of do music based off what the era really is. Mm. So this was some of the fucking meanest times of my life outside of whatever was going on with G-Unit. On my end of life, I had a whole nother kind of war going on as well with them as far as, you know, it was a lot going on with the whole Murder Inc. and G-Unit shit at the time. But from a street perspective, I was creating music like at that time from actually dealing with shit locally and local wars and local shit that was kind of keeping the fuel going in, in, in that in that pen and shit too. So like I say, I've always based my music off the reality of, of time, of where I really stand at. I've never been a one to kind of create a song and come back three months later and rap it. I walk in the studio not even knowing what the fuck I'm gonna do. Mm. You know, I'm at a point now where I don't even take a pen or paper. There's so much to talk about. It's one of these things where just turn the fucking beat on, G, you know? Definitely. Um, but so how do you get in the mind state to record at this point? Because, I mean, you, you clearly are in an older, more well-adjusted position in comparison to, you know, a lot of the, the best rap music is made by very, like, angry young men. How do you sort of find that energy? I mean, honestly, man, when you see shit going on like George Floyd, rest in peace, <laughs> it ain't hard to find motivation. The only place I couldn't find motivation to make music was where you think a person would make it at, and that was in prison. Mm. I could not find the motivation to write a fucking rap while I've been in jail. I started trying to write a book, and I have wrote half of a book. It's, it's called Life Behind the Walls kind of my experience in prison as a fucking full-fledged celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I did it backwards. I've done a lot as far as growing up and being a part of the, the, my environment, a product of my environment. I've done a lot, but was blessed not to go to prison. I became a millionaire with the prison. When I didn't have shit and was doing all this shit to go to prison, I was blessed not to go. But when I wasn't doing a goddamn thing, I found myself in prison. So I started to find motivation. I, I felt like I was motivated to be able to tell the story of what I could see and what was going on versus then trying to put it in rhyme format and do it that way. So my motivation comes from the things that I'm going through or been through or just the surroundings of me. It's so real and just life in itself is so real of what we live in and going through that I try to touch bases and stick to that lane because I like for the fan to either say or find something from me that I'm saying where they can either say, uh, I know somebody going through that or either I'm going through that my goddamn self. Or I don't never want to go through no shit like that. Mm. So, you know, in some kind of way, 
no matter even if I'm talking about busting a motherfucker head on the record, there's still some type of teaching to it and reality to it. You know, as harsh as this shit may sound, it's sometimes from a motherfucker like myself, it's still the reality of the, of the environment either I'm coming from or living in. And honestly, to keep creating the music that I create, I've always felt like I've had to keep one foot in and one foot out, bro. Mm. And, 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 and honestly, it's been a gift and a curse in my career, keeping one foot in and one foot out. The gift of it, well, the curse of it is having one foot over here makes me vulnerable for all the bullshit to come along with the streets. I still feel that shit mm. because I'm all the way over here in this industry and this celebrity life of this here because all my people still over here. So it's like, I could never feel like I'm a full fledged star or how these dudes rock around because shit, everything that raised me or everything that I love is still in the fucking bottom of the barrel and I ain't in a position to pull them out yet. <laughs> so I had to kind of keep one foot in or help pull them out. You get what I'm saying? So that was the one foot in, that was the, that was the, 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 the curse in a sense is having to feel and deal with all of those pressures of the streets. Well, I had the one foot in the streets and one foot out, but the gift of it was that I found my life and going through all these trials and tribulations that forced me to have to fucking go back to the fucking streets, bro. Mm. And the fact that me having just that one fucking foot over there in the streets, when I was forced to go back, they was right there with open arms waiting on me. So it's just me in the streets right now doing what we got to do, you know? But that's the, the weird shit is that, you know, I'll be honest with you, I never really had any doubts that there might have been times in Young Buck's life where there was that that conflict of, you know, you're famous, you're in the industry, but you also, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make something shake. But the question is, is just like, you know, why, why, we've never heard about Young Buck getting caught up over some serious shit. It's always some silly shit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, honestly, I think um, that's just nobody to give the praise to other than God, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I give, you know what? I feel way more comfortable. I guess my glow is different. My flow is different and everything. It's just because I got two feet now into this shit. It's no other foot over there no more. Mm. It's either this is it. This is it for me. This is There's no plan B. So for a lot of these artists and a lot of the reactions and shit that they used to get out of me, it dealt with me having that foot over there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm no better. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.